I thought, why not, why not end the year with a message called God is good? Can you turn to your neighbor, whichever one's prettier, and tell them, just turn to your neighbor, tell them God is good. So if you grew up in church, you know when somebody says God is good, that is a, that is a statement that requires a response, right? So this is an interactive message. So when somebody tells you God is good, you say, and then I say all the time. All right, let's try it one more time. God is good. And all the time. All right, praise God. We're going to get into the word today. If you can open up your Bibles to Luke 11, sorry, Luke 17, verse 11 through 19. All right, here's the scripture. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go, show yourselves to the priests. As they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was cleansed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at the feet of Jesus and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. I want you guys to imagine living your life, building the best life you possibly could for yourself getting your education, getting a job, providing for yourself and your loved ones, doing what God has called you to do, serving him how he's called you to serve, using your gifts, and then one day you wake up and you, your, your body and your hands start to look deformed and it continues to get worse and you have a finger or two fall off and you realize what's happening so what you do is you, put a, you cover yourself up and you put a hoodie on and you try and hide it because you know when civilization finds out what's going on with you that you're going to be exiled. That's what the lepers had to deal with. When, they, when the leprosy came across their body and infected them, their life as they knew it was over. They were ripped away from their family and their friends and their workplaces and they had to go live in a leper colony outside the borders of the city. And the only people they had contact with was other lepers. They weren't allowed to come into the city because people were scared that they would contract that disease. So it was a lonely existence and their life that they tried to build was over. And that's the first point, that the hurting are outside the borders. If we want to encounter those that need the power and need the love of God the most, we have to get outside ourselves. We have to get outside our comfort zones. When we walk out of this church, we have to make sure our faith stays on and activated because God can work in here as we already saw this morning, but he, was, he works out there, outside the borders of the church, just as much as he works at the altar. But if we leave this place and our faith's not on, he's not gonna work because he's called us to do his work. He's called us to be his vessels to work through. So we have to walk out of here with our faith activated to go and make the change to be outside the borders. I had to, I came across this a little bit when I was getting ready for my PT test and I was going for a run in my neighborhood and there was a guy that was working at the house across the street doing construction and it was in the summer and it was blistering hot outside. So God said, take him a glass of water and just try and create a conversation, pray for him, see what's going on in his life. And I was like, after my run, God. So, yeah, stupid. I went for the run, did a lap. He's loading up his truck, getting ready to go. I was like, one more lap. I do another lap. I go inside. I'm tired. I get a glass of cold water, and the Holy Spirit's like, what are you doing? I just told you to go give that to somebody else. You're going to drink it. So I go. I create another glass for myself. Take him, the first one. 
And I just asked him if there's anything I could pray for him about, just like get his name and told him God prompted me to come speak with him. And can I pray for him? And his answer was no. And so I asked, are you sure? Sometimes you just gotta ask twice. But after I said, are you sure? He was like, actually, yeah. Um, my marriage isn't doing well. Things aren't good at home. Uh, I'm not living at home actually right now. And I have three kids, so we don't know what's gonna happen with, I, I don't want to get divorced, but just life has hit me and things weren't good. And he starts pouring out his heart. And so I ask him if I can pray and, and we pray. And I invite him to church, but he lives in Maryland. And I was like, please find and get plugged into a church there. But uh, at that moment, it wasn't crazy. It wasn't life changing. I couldn't do anything physically for him. But the act of being obedient to God and going to speak to him, there, here was a man that was hurting and had pain, didn't want to talk about it until I asked twice. But in that moment, he realized that God notices and God cares that God sees his pain and his hurting and he's sending people to him, that God notices us right. in our pain. God sees every and cares about every detail in our lives. And that's the second point. Our second point today is our God is approachable. He's waiting for you to come to him because that's where lives are changed when we approach our God. Sometimes we think our, our issues are so little that there's bigger issues out there in the world and that God's not gonna deal with my little issue or our issues are so big that it's like, there's no way I'm too far removed, I'm too far gone, there's no way God loves and cares for me. He cares about both, the big and the little. He cares about every little detail in your life. Scripture says he knows the amount of hair that's numbered on your head, whether you got a lot of hair or you have none and you're beautifully bald. He cares for every little detail that's in your life. He wants you to bring everything to him because he loves you, you're his child, and he cares for you. We're gonna continue in the, in the story. As the lepers stood off in a distance and they called out in a loud voice, Jesus, master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. See, Jesus said, go to the priests. And I'm sure those lepers were excited. They probably didn't just walk, they probably ran to the priest because they knew what that meant back in, back in their time that if somebody was lucky enough to see their, their leprosy subside and seeing the symptoms seem to go away, they would go to the priest and ask, to be, uh, and ask to be declared clean and the priest would put them in quarantine for, for a time, eight days. And then after that time, they would, the priest would come back to them and if everything was clean and gone, he would be declared clean and they can go back to the life that had been ripped away from him. So they probably ran to the priest when Jesus said, go show yourselves to the priest. But here's the part that stuck out to me. Here's the part that hit me. As they went, they were cleansed. See, most of the time when we see the miracles, Jesus touches somebody and, it's he and they're healed. Jesus touches somebody and their lives are changed. But not this time. Jesus said, go. And they began to walk or run and that's when they were cleansed. They didn't stand there waiting for their life to be changed. And that's the third point today is they walked in their miracle before it manifested. Sometimes we have to live our lives like we know what the promises of God are. Sometimes the world, Satan tries to tell you that you're not enough, that you're not good enough, that what your goals are out of reach, what he's called you to do is not gonna happen but those are all lies and we have to hit it with the truth. When the world tells you that you're not enough, you have to know who your father is. See, imagine meeting the child, the children of Bill Gates and telling them, you're poor, you're poor, you're poor, you're poor. And eventually they're gonna be like, stop. Do you know who my father is? I'm not poor. So when the world tells you, that you're not enough, that you're not good enough, that you're not gonna accomplish what God's called you to do. You have to tell Satan, stop. Do you know who my father is? Because he's a heavenly God that loves us and says he's gonna make all things for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. See, this part of the scripture hit me very hard. 
a few weeks ago when Pastor Ryan texted me and said, would you like to preach on the 29th? I responded to him, and in short, I just said no. No way. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. So, that's how, that, that was the end of the conversation. <laughs> and then the next day, well, let me, go, let me re rewind back a little further. This is why it hit me so hard. I was, a few months prior to that, before I said no, I was standing right here. I was asleep, I had a vision from the Holy Spirit, I was standing in this exact spot, and lined up to my right was Pastor Ryan, and Jody, and Cornelius, and John Bowman, and Paul Bowman, <laughs> and Jeff Dyer, and some really old guys that was before Pastor Kuhn, <laughs> y'all don't even know, I don't know their names, and uh, he said, just as I spoke to Pastor Kuhn and all of them, I'm gonna speak to you for my body, the church. And I, I woke up in that instant, bawling my eyes out, and it was amazing. I was like, yes, I can't wait for that vision to come true. I can't wait for that, for that day. A few months forward, get the message from Pastor Ryan, nope. <laughs> so, so some of y'all are like, Brandon, you're stupid. Like, you're, God said he's gonna do it, and then you get the chance and you say no. The very next day after I said no, I open up to do my devotions, and this is the scripture that I come across, Luke chapter 17, and when I read that they walked first before the miracle happened, the Holy Spirit said, you, you are the lepers if they never walked. That's how you're living, that's what you're being like, because you're scared. You're waiting to become the, the speaker that you think you're gonna be, that you think you have to be before you get up there. You're like the lepers, if they stood there waiting, I can't go to the priest until I see it, until I'm clean, I can't go. No, they walked knowing what Jesus said he was gonna do, and knowing by the time they got there, it was gonna come true. Some of you know, some of you know what God has been calling you to do, how he's called you to minister to your neighborhoods, to the people that you work with, to the people around you outside the borders. You know how God has called you. Maybe he's, at, he's already dropped in your heart that you're supposed to volunteer at youth ministry and you just haven't done it yet. Maybe it's that. Maybe he's called you to work with Pastor John and the G Team ministry and, and True Fire Kids and when they go out to the neighborhoods, you wanna talk about missions and, the, and G Team goes out to, to the neighborhoods of Dover and just share the love of Jesus with kids in, in the neighborhoods. And you know that God has called you to do that. And it's simply a matter of whatever he's been putting on your heart to do. Maybe it's to have a community group in your home so families can come and share life and do discipleship together. You know God has been calling you to do something, yet you just haven't followed through because you're waiting for yourself to look like a certain thing, to be a certain way before you can actually minister to others. And that's not true because where we fall short, where we're sufficient, he fills the gap. I thought I wasn't good enough, and Holy Spirit said, you need to stop because you're, you're right, you're not good enough, but I am. So you go up there and you just do what I tell you to do. Some of you just have to walk out what God's been calling you to do your whole life because he's gonna make you, he's gonna fill the gap and he's gonna make it work for his good and he's gonna get the glory. Verse 15 continues, one of the men, one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Worship team, you can come on up. You see, all 10 lepers came to Jesus because they've heard the stories. This wasn't the beginning of Jesus' ministry. They've heard the rumors. They've heard what Jesus can do. So they seek him out. All had faith that Jesus could do, so do something for their life. Jesus tells them to go. All had faith to go. So why does Jesus tell this one, rise and go, your faith has made you well? He's already cleansed. See, the original translation about this word, your faith, is referring, not referring to 
just the faith in his heart, but it's, re it's referring to his actual salvation. His faith has saved him. Not just healed his body, his faith saved his soul because God did something good in his life. And when God does something good, it deserves a response. Just like we, did, we said that phrase earlier, that God is good, it deserves a response. Jesus heals him, changes his life forever, and it deserved a response on the leper's life, and he came back in a loud voice praising Jesus. In the same way, in our lives, God is good and deserve, it deserves a response. 2,000 years ago, Christ got up on the cross at Calvary and died for our sins. Three days later, defeated that death and rose from the grave for our sins. That makes him good. That makes him worthy of our praise. And that deserves a response with our heart and our life to return to him and praise him. So today, church, we're gonna, we're gonna finish off by praising God because he's worthy. We're gonna, we're gonna sing one more song because he deserves that praise. If, if God never did anything for you the rest of your life, would you still praise and worship him? Would he still be worthy? We expect these good things, but the truth is he gave us eternal life. So if he never does anything ever again for the rest of my life, he gave me eternal life. So that makes him worthy. As you leave here, as we sing and as you leave here today, I just want to ask you to do one thing. What's the application and the action step? That in your life, take a time, take a pause, take a moment. Because a lot of times God is doing a lot of good things in our lives, or there's a lot of things going on. And as the 10 lepers ran to the priest, one decided to stop and turn and go back to Jesus and say thank you. The scripture says actually in a loud voice, he returned and gave praise in a loud voice to stop in your life and take a pause in a moment and notice the good of God around you. Be thankful for the eternal life. Be thankful for the things he's doing in your life because our God is good all the time. and all the time. God is good. Praise God. Thank you, guys.